Mr. Slack, the female pupil's lavatory has been vandalized yet again, and this must not go unpunished. Expel any girl with makeup and learning difficulties. Yes, Mr. Slack. <laughs> if you can find one with jewelry, all the better. Right, of course. Susie. Nice one, Dan. Really stood up for yourself there. Mr. Slat! Yes, yes, what, yes? Mr. Slat, I have to bring to your attention the fact that I have been facially assaulted. <laughs> well, I think unlucky would be a better word. <laughs> but try and compensate with your personality or maybe take up religious work. No, no, I have been punished physically in the face. I cannot believe that you're still on about one trifling incident that's now over six months ago. I mean, I apologised at the time. <laughs> In the cut and thrust of an Easter service, there was bound to be a certain amount of hard physical violence. <laughs> In fairness to me, you were interrupting. This is entirely different. As I've told you before, Mr. Pliff, if you can't stand the heat, duck. But this is a new punch, a different punch. I was punched by one of the pupils! Right, OK, fine. Name? Amanda Tripley. <laughs> The pupil's name is Tripley. David Guthrie, beastly child. David Guthrie, 4B. That's him. Are you absolutely certain he's doing rather well in computing? Mr. Slap. Are, are, are you sure it wasn't uh, James Dowling? His parents are divorced. Uh, Mr. Slap, uh, Miss Travis was uh, making rather an interesting point. Even if I find a girl with makeup and learning difficulties, can we actually be certain that she's guilty of toilet vandalism? <laughs> yes, thank you, Miss Travis. But I think I know how to run the school's discipline policy. How about Raymond Tilfer? Overweight, no friends. <laughs> it was David Guthrie, Mr. Slat. He punched me because, and I quote, I have a fat, stupid face. I demand to know what is going to be done about it. Well, I don't know. Perhaps some sort of hood. Um... <laughs> I was asking, Mr. Slat, what is going to be done about David Guthrie? Oh, for goodness sake, let's not take this too seriously. You know, David's just the sort of fast-track young rap scallion who's always getting up to merry japes like punching an assault. <laughs> I don't believe this. Amanda has just told you she was hit by a pupil. Miss Tripley, Amanda, as I'm sure you'll be the first to agree, you have a rather disturbing face. <laughs> and you must expect, in the fullness of time, for it to be hit. If, for instance, it appears unexpectedly in low lighting, or <laughs> perhaps you smile. Oh, yes, 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 I see. <laughs> yeah, the rest of us don't get a football in the face every time we cross the playground, you know. And when we do, the pupils don't count it as a goal. Oh, no, that was my suggestion. That's how we always used to play when I was a child. There was no room in our garden for goalposts, so Father had to improvise. <laughs> Happy days. Yes, yes. Well, there we are, then. I soon found out it was a jolly good way of making new friends, actually. Good, good. <laughs> now, if that's all... Thank you, Mr Slayer. No, Amanda. He punched you in the face. Oh, what's one punch? I've got a game of cricket tonight, anyway. <laughs> Mr. Slat! Yes! Yes! What? Yes! I would like some clarification on the discipline policy of this school. What? Because at the moment it sounds like the ravings of a delusional paranoic. Miss Travis, I formulated the school's disciplinary policy. Didn't I just say that? <laughs> Very well, then. If you have some views on the subject, perhaps instead of rushing off home immediately, as I notice you normally do with remarkable speed at the close of every school day, you'll stay behind and take part in our staff meeting. Fine. Hmm? No problem. I, I was wanting a word with Mr McGill anyway. Fantastic! <laughs> I mean, fine. But I warn you, Miss Travis, the first track hothouse of a girl first I staff meeting is strictly for men. Well, and women, obviously. But men and women with balls. <laughs> well, metaphorical balls. Well, mine aren't metaphorical. I've got proper ones. <laughs> As you'll soon find out at this meeting. I'd not that I'm going to let you see them or anything. <laughs> but you'll just be aware of them, you know, lurking under the table. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to say that this is going to be a tough meeting, that's all. So you can just forget about seeing my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> not in front of the staff, Janet. Not even when we're alone, it would seem. Not for three months. Could we please have some professional decorum? Thank you very much. Did we all sleep well last night, then? Huh? I slept well. Peaceful. Undisturbed. Yeah, I wouldn't call you exactly peaceful, dear. Your mouth was open. <laughs> he simply has no idea about women. My husband. I need to be tattooed with some sort of road map. You mean you're not? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, 
headmaster. I've just been having a word with what's her name. You know, a difficult girl in the fourth form. Uh, enormous shoulders, auburn moustache. <laughs> uh, could you be a little more specific? Gail Bennett. Oh. If we could perhaps have a quick word. Well, uh, I've got in my office at the moment. A bit of an emergency. Yes, yes, of course. No problem. Yes. So, what can I do for you? Where does this meeting happen, then? Upstairs staff room. I'll show you. You take Bobby Jones for maths, don't you? Uh, first year? Yeah, I do. What do you make of him? Well, what do you make of him? Well, his oral skills are good, but his written work seems confused at times. There's just something a bit odd about him. I've tried talking to him, but he's very unresponsive. And I was just starting to wonder if he's the same way in other classes. What's he like in maths? Dan. Sorry, I got a bit distracted during that. Which part? Uh, everything after oral. <laughs> the thing is, he left his bag in class today. I was having a look through some of his other work. Read that, will you? What, this? Yeah, aloud. Uh, Bungie de Quiltfang. Metallurgical whipsnade keebles to Kitoff. Thyroid dingo Wolverhampton. Yeah, yeah, the site goes on. What do you think? Well, it's, uh... It's a Strandsian, isn't it? Ah, uh, Strandsian? Yeah, Strandsian. You know, he's studying Strandsian. It's, uh, it's a language. It's um, what they speak in Strandsia. Strandsia? Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a country. Bollocks! <laughs> OK, then. Better speak to his languages teacher. Uh, that's me, actually. What? Uh, I'm his language teacher. You? Yeah. Dan, you're a maths teacher. Uh, well, yes. Uh, but... There was a math staff surplus at the beginning of the year. Mr. Slat said he'd have to let me go unless I doubled up on languages. It's a sort of cost-cutting thing. So, <laughs> to keep your job, you became a languages teacher? Yep, yeah, that's it. And how many languages do you speak, Dan? Uh, well, just Estransian, really. <laughs> Dickhead! Estransian? Yeah. Read me some more Estransian, Dan. Well, I don't really think... Dan, read. Follicles diddy bongo. <laughs> Aluminium whoppers to kit off. Hebe hebe twango rollocks. <laughs> rollocks. Dan, there is no such language as a Strandsian. Well, not actually, no. You made it up, didn't you? Well, yes, in fact, yes, oh. I did. Dan! I thought you were the one sane person in this place. Well, you don't know what it was like. I, I was this close to losing my job. I. I just found myself stuck with a modern languages class. I just sort of panicked. So you invented a new language to avoid embarrassment? I think that may be unique. Well, <laughs> I never thought it would work, you see, but they actually started learning. <laughs> I'm a maths teacher. I'm not used to that. <laughs> well, now here I am, stuck with a class full of kids all speaking fluent Estransian. <laughs> I haven't got the faintest clue what they're talking about. OK, OK, it was a stupid thing to let happen. And I promised at the time I'd never get myself into that kind of situation again. <laughs> and if Bobby's geography teacher happens to point out there's no Estransia on the map? Oh, no, there is an Estransia on the map. Oh, you mean there is an Estransia? No, I mean I'm his geography teacher. <laughs> Tell me, is there any job around here you're not prepared to do to keep Eric Slat happy? However unhappy poor little Bobby Jones gets. I mean, are you aware this kid already spends half his time with a school nurse? Well, obviously I am. But in all fairness, I can never find anything wrong with him. <laughs> You're the nurse. Well, you see, what do you do? 